Hey, this is Mike. I'm here with my buddy Matt. He's the engineer student at UNC Charlotte and uh, you know, kind of drilling them with some questions here on different engineering, automotive engineering uh, questions. And uh, you know, one of the ones I had was if all engines run and they, they fire on one cylinder at a time, why is it that usually the more pistons, the more power? So I uh, you know, never really could get a, uh, an answer from anybody else, so hopefully Matt has an answer for us. This is such a fun question because basically all of my study is how to make an engine make more power. So we have to approach this one fundamentally. What truly makes an engine create power and what truly makes an engine more powerful than another one? And there's a great adage amongst engineers and anybody who's ever done anything with cars that there's no replacement for displacement. And from a physics term, displacement is the amount, the volume, that is moved or gained or lost from one place to another. So you may look at cars and you really have 3.6, 454, 350, you know, 7.3, and all this in either in cubic inches or cubic centimeters or liters is referring to their displacement. And the displacement of an engine is the aggregate, which means the total amount of the volume of every cylinder in the engine. From the pistons at the top to the bottom, how much space does each piston mo um, move whenever it goes from the top to the bottom? And you add all of them up and you get your total displacement. Like if you've got a like a six liter six cylinder, that means each piston is going to displace one liter of air and gasoline. And the more air and gasoline you have, the more power it's going to make. Just like if you were to have more dynamite, it's going to give you a bigger explosion. So, you can increase the displacement two ways in a multi-cylinder engine. You can make each cylinder bigger, or you can add more cylinders. And essentially, all adding cylinders does is increases the amount of displacement an engine has. And the more displacement you have, the more power you're going to get. Because the more gasoline is being burnt in the same amount of time, which is all, simply all it is. The more cylinders you have, the more gasoline the engine can burn at the same amount of time and convert into power. And like a dime a dozen, there are many, many different benefits and detriments to having eight, six, well, eight, six, and four cylinders, and sometimes one or two cylinders. And if you're really talking, maybe 10 or 12 cylinders. So with an engine that burns more fuel, it's obviously going to get less gas mileage. You know, the gas mileage isn't going to generally be as good. Generally. Sometimes it can be. Most of the time it's not. So, at a car like this, this is an eight-cylinder Hemi, it's going to displace 5.4 liters. So yeah, it's going to make a little bit more, ho a good bit more horsepower than, say, this six-cylinder over here that only displaces 3.6 liters. That one's actually 5.7, but yeah. This is yeah. a 5.7? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but, this car, because it doesn't displace as much fuel, it's going to get slightly better gas mileage because it burns less fuel in the same amount of time. So you can see a trend that goes from cars with a higher displacement to cars with a lower displacement. But where a V8 falls in fuel efficiency, it gains in performance. Because the engine is burning more gas, it doesn't have to work quite as hard. And it's going to be a slightly more reliable. I like, I like the technology that's um, becoming prevalent in these V6s. We're seeing amazing horsepower numbers out of these V6s. Some even which are comparable to V8s. This Pentastar that Chrysler has developed comes close to 320 horsepower, which is pretty, you know, which is pretty good for only 3.6 liters. And at the other end, we have a four-cylinder engine. A four-cylinder engine, normally like a straight four, has a huge advantage over V6. It's not, it's not as low on power as you think it is because it can spin faster. The faster an engine can spin, the more gas it can burn in the same amount of time. But this one's going to be significantly more fuel efficient because it's only burning half as much gas as the V8. But it's able to produce, you know, add more power. So, in summary, the reason why a larger engine or an engine with more cylinders is more powerful is because it burns more gas in the same amount of time. Just like you can move more dirt with a bigger shovel each time you scoop each time you scoop dirt out of the ground. Okay, that sounds good. 
Now, um, is there a diminishing return for too many cylinders? Like, say, if you had like a hundred cylinders or something like, or not? I mean, that's ridiculous. But say, like, say a twenty-four cylinder engine or something like that. Believe it or not, so engines with that many cylinders do exist. Um, diesel trains, diesel electric trains have eighteen cylinders. Tanker like boats, um, like what are they called? Cargo boats or whatever they are they have like 20 cylinders. And generally the more cylinders you have, the more power you can create. But if you have the same displacement and increase the amount of cylinders, the faster your engine's gonna be able to spin because the cylinders are gonna be smaller because you're dividing the displacement among smaller, among smaller cylinders. So they're gonna be able to spin a little faster. So that's why a V10 will make more power than a V8. Well, it's also why a V8 will make more torque because the cylinders are bigger. So. It's really a big game of rock, paper, scissors based on what you're trying to do. I don't necessarily consider it to be a return investment. It's all about what you're trying to do. I mean, if you look at the examples in this, in this yard, you know, a VA, it's going to have the best power because it burns the most gas, but it's going to have the, le the least fuel efficiency because it burns the most gas. You know, and a six cylinder could meet somewhere in the middle, and the four cylinder is going to have the least power, but burn the least gas. It's all linear. So I guess if you don't really need to go that fast, you don't mind the, the lack of horsepower, but you do want to save gas, the four cylinder might be the best option. It's all, it's all based on your prerogative. I mean, if you want to buy a car that's quick, you know, you're going to want a V8 plus V8 sound really good. Yeah. I mean, and if you're going to get, you know, if you want something that's going to have good power and decent fuel efficiency, you know, a V6. And that's why the automotive market is trending towards V6s because we're increasing the technology within them so much. They're making pretty comparable power to a V8 and still retaining good fuel efficiency. But if you really want to be fuel efficient, if you're a commuter, you know, you don't necessarily want to do zero to 60 in five seconds, you know, a four cylinder is more than adequate. No way, by no means am I doubting the power of a four cylinder. I mean, a street bike has only one liter of displacement and makes almost 100 horsepower. So it's not necessarily saying they're weak. All it means is they don't, they're not, they don't burn as much gas as a V8 does. So it's not necessarily going to make quite as much power. All right. Uh, I think we've, uh, we've covered that pretty good. And if you have any questions for Matt, just leave it in the comment section. If you have anything to add or correct, leave it also in the comment section, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.